to say a tiny bit about um, Norfolk and Waverley Mind and how come we're offering this this opportunity really a couple of years ago when uh, it became very apparent that the climate crisis was a very real thing with Greta and all the Extinction Rebellion activities we found we were having people come to us who were starting to express a lot of concern and anxiety feelings of overwhelm about about the climate uh, about biodiversity loss uh, about this massive challenge that we're facing and so we trialed a few different things in, and we discovered this fantastic book um, Act of Hope <laughs> um, and really realized how much um, how much wisdom and uh, how, how much sort of practi practical support there was in this body of work that Active Hope represents that Chris has so skillfully brought together in the book. And we use that to, to, to trial some different ways of supporting people, including a, a Mindfulness and Active Hope course. And really since then, we've, we've been very lucky to secure some funding from the Co-op Resilience Fund to extend that offer so that we now offer uh, a number of other things, including climate cafes, um, and other kinds of ways to kind of normalize the conversation and find a way to turn towards this very difficult um, challenge that we're facing without becoming overwhelmed. So I'm just going to pass over to my colleague Caroline, who's the sustained coordinator, and she's just going to very briefly say a few words about that project and another sister project as well, the Nature Connect project, which is also funded by the Co-op um, uh, Foundation, who are supportive of the work we're doing around climate and nature engagement. So I'll just pass over to you. Okay, Karen. thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Um, can you put on the next slide? Yeah, it's not the same. I hope it will. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so um, yeah, thank you. I'm, as it says, sustain coordinator. Um, it's interesting, the name sustain, um, it's about us. So the you and the S are capital letters. We're sustaining ourselves, making ourselves more resilient to you, me and us. So um, we're responding to climate concerns with active hope. And we this it's a year long project. We're working with individuals in Norwich at the university and Sheringham and surrounds. We have awareness raising events um, and we have climate cafes where feelings can be shared a six week group program based on mindfulness and active hope. So that's the sort of, in a nutshell, our project partners, which uh, Ruth has already, well, yeah, we've got UNIS, but UEA, University, um, Climate Psychology Alliance are our partners and we do work with other groups and people as well. Um, the, it's quite a unique, angle where we are partnering with the university, um, a mental health charity pioneering uh, a project on climate anxiety with the university. And one of um, our course has been co is being co-designed and co-led by students. Um, and that's one of our workshops where we were working with our students. One of us is here, <laughs> here today. Um, so a little bit about Nature Connect, our sister project. Um, it's uh, our staff are on as well today. Chris Stroud, Chris Stroud, sorry, Lucy Allen and Adam Shawyer um, are, are on, on the call. Um, so yeah, the Nature Connect is um, in three different parts of Norfolk, Great Yarmouth, Norwich, and Kings Lynn, and it's offering. It, it, it's offering um, pottering groups, crops in pots courses, walks and forest bathing. The aims are to reconnect with underused green or blue spaces uh, for better mental well-being. Um, we also have foraging events and other visits and the Nature Reconnect groups, which are based on ecotherapy and the principles of nature connectedness research group at the U. So the University of Derby have a research group and we're using their principles for our nature reconnect groups. So there's quite a lot going on with nature, nature connect. 
And at the end of this, um, we won't go into all the details of all what's available for the lo local activities, but we will let you know at the end. Um, and you can always ask us as well. So give you a bit more um, information. So we're now going on to our main star event. Our main star. <laughs> so I just um, introduced Chris. Um, and I don't know if he needs any introduction, but he has a Chris Johnston's background in medicine and psychology. Um, his work over the last 30 years has focused on exploring what helps us face disturbing situations and responding in ways that contribute to positive change. He's been working closely with uh, the US author Joanna Macy and spiritual activist. Um, and he's a co-author with her of the book that Ruth was waving around, Active Hope, and it's now published in 14 languages. Um, he's also written seven ways to build resilience and his online resilient course, resilience courses at the College of Wellbeing and Active Hope Training have engaged students from more than 60 countries. That's amazing. Um, and it's enabling people to feel less overwhelmed by world events and feeling personally nourished and that's why we asked Chris to, and he's very kindly agreed to talk today um, and help us in this interactive workshop so over to you Chris thank you thank you Caroline uh, thank you Ruth and thank you everyone thank you everyone for coming for being here and I'd like to share screen and I, I was going to ask you a question uh, as a, a group. So um, we're looking at what helps us when we face disturbing news uh, about the state of the world. And I just wanted to start just by asking you, how do you feel? What kind of feelings tend to come up? Just invite you to write them in the chat window when I'm taking in um, information about climate change, about many of the other issues in our world that concern me, the kind of feelings that come up are, or I'm often left feeling. Do you want to just write any of that in the chat window? It would just give us a, a starting point. And just for myself, you know, uh, I um, I recognise some of the things that have already been mentioned. I've, I've, I've seen reference to climate grief, climate anxiety, and and I'm seeing here uh, and invite you to see the chat window if you can. Sad, I freeze, I go into shock, worried, overwhelmed, helpless, despair, helpless, anxious, worry, despair, hopeless, pessimistic, angry, angry, sad, a stomach lurch, a little burst of adrenaline, more recently a feeling of numbness, out of control. That There's more and more. And as I read through those, including frustration, anger and angry, I just want to acknowledge that um, these are normal, normal feelings that when you face disturbing information, don't be surprised if you feel disturbed. And if in some ways it's a good thing because it shows you've noticed, I'd actually be a bit more concerned if you um, if I if I ask you how you felt when you looked at things like climate um climate change and you were saying I feel very delighted and happy and calm and optimistic about the future uh, you know if you'd written things like that I'd be wondering if you'd really got it quite how difficult things are and so we're going to be looking at first of all just normalizing you know for first normalizing is just to say this is normal this is a normal healthy response to feel disturbed when you encounter situations that are disturbing but also to know that you're not alone we can often feel alone because there's often a sense in conversation that we should keep these kind of things to ourselves that we don't want to pull other people down that there are some things that aren't really invited as everyday conversation is that there's a bit of a taboo about talking about this but i want to acknowledge that these are normal, these are healthy, these are widespread, and also these can be hard. You know, sometimes they can feel overwhelming. And so what I, a phrase I'm really um, using a lot more these days is the idea of Project Active Hope. And Project Active Hope is where we take on the project of supporting ourselves and each other in responding to these big issues. And um, 
there's there's different types of change there's there's finding and playing our part but there's also supporting our capacity to find and play our part and that's the bit i'd really like to focus on and the goal in this session is really about introducing um active hope as a as a practice a life affirming practice it's something we do that nourishes our aliveness and a sense of purpose while also contributing to the world i love this idea of things that are good for us and also good for the world and so when you um when you encounter disturbing information and you find yourself feeling that kind of charge of adrenaline or you know many of the different things that you feel one of the things that we're looking at is well what can you give to that how can you respond and i want to introduce this practice of active hope you know mindfulness is a practice yoga is a practice these are tai chi these are well-being practices you can do every day and it's through developing a kind of a discipline of a regular pra practice that you support well-being i want to introduce the idea that active hope is a practice for collective well-being, not just our own well-being, but the well-being of the world that we live in too. So I want to really look at, well, what, what do I mean by active hope? But also, I also want to point to the subtitle here, how to face the mess we're in with unexpected resilience and creative power. And I want to say a bit more about, well, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by unexpected resilience and creative power? And I'd like you to look at this picture and notice the background. Notice the background. I don't, I don't know if anybody wants to write in um, what, what, what they see. I'm seeing burnt wood. This is the aftermath of a, a wildfire. And what I mean by unexpected resilience well this word resilience is often used and, and and i just want to say a bit about different types of resilience and i actually did a session um earlier this year on resilience and may have actually shown this slide um, one view of resilience is um when you squeeze actually i'm going to invite you to do this i'm going to invite you just right now this is a thought experiment a thought experiment to imagine that you're holding a tennis ball in one hand and a tomato in the other and and i'll explain why but just just some just imagine that you've got a tennis ball in one hand and a tomato in the other and this is a thought experiment about um resilience and what i'm going to do is i'm going to squeeze the hand with the tennis ball and invite you to do that too if you kind of almost close your eyes or half close your eyes imagine there's a tennis ball in one hand and you squeeze and how does that feel squeeze and then let go squeeze and then release and then you do the same with the tomato. You squeeze and then you release. Squeeze again and, and then release. And what happens? What happens in your in your hands? Just inviting you maybe to write in the chat window. Um, I, I've, I've done this um, with a tomato um, on a course and actually it made a mess. It squirted. I was so surprised at how far the tomato pips some um, seeds squirted out sideways when when i squeezed and um you end up as as pa paula says um, with a very messy hand and it's interesting here because resilience is often thought of as like the tennis ball you know it, basically a tennis ball when you squeeze it it springs back into shape and we can sometimes feel we should be like that we should just take in all this bad news about the climate and just spring back into shape we have a bit of a squeeze and then we just return to our, our, our normal state and, and and resilience it comes from the word resilere it's its latin root which means to spring back into shape but the tomato it's an interesting one if you imagine holding a tomato outside and you squeeze it's possible to imagine that you could come back 10 years later and see tomato plants growing around you we often think of a tomato collapsing as not very resilient we say oh that's not very resilient and sometimes i don't know about you but sometimes i can feel a bit like a tomato when i encounter climate bad news that i end up feeling like a bit of a mess on the floor and and if you ever feel that you're like a squash tomato just say okay um that's step one but just remember that when you squeeze a tomato, you release seeds of future possibility. 
And so you could imagine coming back 10 years, if you could time travel, you could even come back maybe a hundred years or a thousand years and imagine that seeds release have led to a whole continual process of life, of death and you know, release of seeds and future generations, that there might be still tomato plants growing. And tomato seeds are so resilient that they can even be pecked up by a bird and then go through the bird's gut and deposited somewhere else and grow into another tomato plant. And the reason I'm saying this here is what I mean by unexpected resilience is the creative power of nature to come back again after disaster. And even after the mass extinction events that have happened in the past, and we think there's maybe five that we know about, one of them where like something like 90% of the life forms were just wiped out. There's massive volcanic activity or perhaps asteroids uh, 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 hitting too. But after those mass extinction events, there were also mass recovery events. And it's a bit like the tomato had been squeezed, but it's released its seeds that grew back into future life. And there's something here about what's the story I tell myself when I collapse? What's the story we even tell about our society if, if we fear that it might collapse? And we can become interested in the process of planting seeds, but also tending for sm to small green shoots. So uh, I, I'm just, there's something here about what's the story I tell myself when I find myself feeling all churned up about bad news. One is it's normal, but another is that sometimes collapsing on the floor may actually be a healthier response if it actually leads to you sort of planting seeds of future change. I know that when I've been most upset and most um, distraught, that it has also led to seeds of conviction that have grown more strongly. And we're going to be looking at how you help that happen, how you help that happen more, that if you do collapse, one of the things that you see in nature is the unexpected resilience. This is after the fire. This is life growing back. And so resilience is where you have a difficult beginning, but it's followed by a response that makes a better next part more likely. And this is really what we're going to be looking at as active hope is when we encounter bad news, how can we have a response that makes a better next part more likely? And you might think, well, what can I do? What can I do? But we'll, we'll just put that, that question aside for now, just to say, OK, it's there. What can I do? But first of all, we're just looking at um, how we feel and how we deal with how we feel and the kinds of stories we tell ourselves about how we feel. We're on a journey and talking about different stories we can tell ourselves um, in the book Active Hope, my colleague Joanna Macy, amazing woman who's 93 years old now and has been an important teacher for me for decades really, more than three decades. And um, one thing that we, we look at is that we can look at the mess we're in from different stories. And what I mean by different stories is stories is like our way of making sense of reality. We, we bring a lot of different pieces and we, we kind of bundle them together in a coherent framework, which is our, our story of how things are. And one common story we call business as usual is that basically things aren't too bad you know we may have a bit of a blip here we may have a bit of a heat wave there but you know it gets hot sometimes it gets cold sometimes it won't be long before things come back to normal and we can carry on our business the way we usually do and i'd say it's that story that we can carry on our business the way we usually do, which is actually threatening our world. It's that that's feeding the climate disaster that we're already in, already entering and moving further into. But then another story, another way of looking at what's going on is that the idea that our world is falling apart. And you may have that feeling sometimes that horrible un unease at unraveling, falling apart, whether it's the climate, but also our social fabric falling apart too, the levels of trust in society, the degrees to which we're um, people increasingly against each other, the polarization uh, around. And, and, and you can see business as usual, you can see the great unraveling and you can even get caught in that story. And when I was, um, 
talking about this at a workshop years ago and we had these big sheets of paper on the floor so someone said yeah i remember i i spent most of my young adulthood in that story and then i spent about six years in the great unraveling before i really got to know the story of the great turning and the story of the great turning is a bit like an adventure story where you may have a difficult beginning but it's how people respond to the difficulty that really makes the rest of the story. And I think of the great turning like that. I think it might be something that perhaps future generations might look back on this time and say, that was the time they really got their act together, that, that people, there was a kind of a mass uh, rapid awakening of consciousness to the disaster happening. And people really got, they really changed. Now, when I talk about that story, sometimes people say things like, well, it's, that's a lovely, lovely story, but I can't see it happening. And one of the reasons we brought out a new edition of Active Hope is that things have got so much worse over the last 10 years that uh, there's, there's a kind of pandemic loss of hope or decline in hope in a way that ideas like The Great Turning um, there's less confidence around that something like that can happen. But one thing I tend to say is, well, OK, um, you can focus on the outcome. You know, will it happen? Won't it happen? But you can also focus on the process. The process is what does it look like moment to moment? And what would it look like if the great turning was happening through you and me right now? And uh, I like the idea of the great turning as a process where really at its core is turning up, turning up with an intention to play our part in this historical moment. And just out of interest, um, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hands if you can do that and you're willing to do that and you say, yes, I'm already doing that. H hands up anyone here thinking, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm turning up in my different ways i'm turning up and look around you we may can sometimes feel alone in that but uh, just to recognize there's there's actually huge numbers of people millions of people around the world turning up with an intention to play their part but also as well as that as well as turning up there's a turning away from that which causes harm a turning away from ways of being and doing and thinking and organizing ourselves that are toxic to the well-being of life on earth and a turning towards the expression of a life sustaining society so how do we deal with the feelings that come up uh, i like the idea that there's a phrase inspirational dissatisfaction inspirational dissatisfaction is where you're so dissatisfied by something that it inspires you to make a decision to um, follow a conviction and to turn up turn up to with an intention to play your part and if your distress is followed by turning up then it becomes what I think of as a sequence of recovery a sequence of recovery can begin with bad news uh, a sequence of resilience it, it, it begin with bad news but it's followed by a response that makes a better next part more likely turning up with an intention to play a part that's a doable thing and so what i like about this um seeing the great turning as a process it's something we can engage in every day you can say yeah i can turn up i can turn up and what active hope is it's a practice that that's part of that and there's three core steps so one is you start from where you are start from where you are facing what you face and feeling what you feel so all of the kind of feelings that were mentioned at the beginning that's step one okay you've paid attention to what's happening you've noticed and some uncomfortable feelings have come up but from that starting point you then identify what you hope for and this diagram here i call it the spider diagram it's really the at the foundation of all the resilience training i do and it, it's it's an insight it's an understanding that whatever you face it can go different ways there's better ways there's worse ways there's um, perhaps you know a whole range of ways in between and 
What we're doing with this starting where we are, identifying what we hope for and taking steps that way, these are the three steps of the practice of active hope. But also it becomes in particularly valuable when there's been a, a, a turning for the worse. So when there's been a turning for the worse and you find yourself on one of these worst legs of the spider, even from there, there's still different ways it can go. And so these three steps, okay, I'm paying attention, I'm, I'm noticing what's going on, noticing the crisis we're in, and yup, we've taken a real downslope here. But from here, it can go different ways. What can I do? Um, well, what, what, first of all, what do I hope will happen? And how can I make that more likely? How can I make that more likely? Um, and so then taking steps that, that way, that's what we mean by active hope. Now, um, we've mentioned Joanna Macy. Here's a picture of her some years ago. Um, and one of the things she developed, I learned from, I learned from her, is uh, a strengthening process, a strengthening process when you're saying, OK, I want to turn up to play my part, but it's hard. And so how can I strengthen my capacity to show up and play my part? And this spiral is a journey through four separate um, places. And what I'm going to do, um, I'm just aware of time, I'm going to suggest that we, um, I'm going to take a bit of a jump. I'm going to suggest that we try this out and that we try this out by trying a, a short form of this. And I'll just say briefly a bit about each of these that um, gratitude is a starting point that if you're going to look at something difficult, it really helps to do that from a stronger starting point. And gratitude is a way of resourcing yourself. And we're going to look a bit more about how to do gratitude. But I also want to recognize that this evening is a taster introduction. And we're touching into it, but there's a lot more. I see gratitude has having hidden depths like a iceberg there's what you see above the water but there's a lot more beneath the surface and hidden depths in gratitude include really about um it's one of our sources of motivation that when we receive we might want to pay back but sometimes the person who supported us or we benefited from isn't around to pay back and so we might pay it forward by passing on the benefit to someone or something else and there are so many ways that we have received from life and that if we really take in our appreciation of that you know just like the air we breathe the food we eat none of this just comes out of nowhere that life has played a role in supporting us and when we pay attention to ways life supports us it strengthens our desire to give back and also to pay it forward. Pay it forward is where you're passing on the benefits to someone else. And I think of this as in generations that we've received from previous generations, we pass on to the next. It's a role we play. What would it be like to be good ancestors, to pay it forward to future generations? So I'm acknowledging that um, there's an issue that comes up with the feelings when we notice what's going on. And someone said to me, they said, you know, I can see it's important, but it, it feels overwhelming. I'm not sure how to deal with what comes up. And I, what I want to do here is just introduce this term honoring as treating with high regard. What I mean by honoring our pain for the world is that we take it seriously. We see it perhaps as a valued messenger that carries important information. And just as an example of that, um, I worked for years in the addictions recovery field. And in that, one of the things that can happen in a crisis is crisis can become a turning point. And it's talked about as hitting rock bottom, where people feel the pain and alarm of a crisis, but that becomes what triggers or provokes a, a, a change but it doesn't always happen you know sometimes people can go for an awful crisis but they say this is too painful i just want to blot it out and they drink more heavily and what happens that i think of that as masking rock bottom and it it, it actually prolongs and worsens the crisis um, and so what i found helpful and i i learned about was this idea that 
you can hit rock bottom when you have a crisis, but you can also look at the crises that are coming up and feel the pain at an earlier stage. And that if you feel the pain of a crash before it happens, it can somehow kind of wake you up or alert you, activate you in a way that you may then take a preparatory response or an avoiding response that um, either reduces the crash or avoids the crash or reduces the harmfulness of the crash. And I, I, I talk about that as pre-traumatic growth, that if you can anticipate a problem coming up, say, you know, perhaps these um, heat waves we've been having this summer is like a wake up call for what's to come. Um, that the crisis can become a turning point, but even the mini crises along the way, they can serve as wake up calls that alert us. And I think of that as raising rock bottom. What we're doing here is we're telling a different story about pain rather than painful feelings somehow as a symptom of something wrong with you. We're saying that painful feelings are an alarm call, that things are amiss. And that what helps that, I um, really liked when we, we looked at the hopes at, at the beginning, Bridget, you said one thing hope you have is to lift a little bit of, eco of the eco grief. And one of the ways that we lift it is first of all, acknowledging it, but also finding that we're not alone with it that it's somehow it's like we share the weight of it. And this is why community grieving um, processes, for example, community grieving rituals around loss, that there's always a sense that community is a container that holds us and supports us through times of loss, through times of grieving. We're not alone. And it's the same with the grieving that we may feel about what's being lost in our world. But I, I also want to introduce the container of trusted practices. And that's really what I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to jump, I'm going to uh, take out of there and I, I'm going to move to a trusted practice now. We're moving around the spiral and in that spiral, we're also um, going to be looking at seeing with new eyes where you open to different perspectives. And we're also going to be looking at the idea of going forth where we find and play our part. And there's some more slides here and you may think, oh, we're missing out on those. But this is just really a teaser because I've set up a free video based online course at activehope.training. And some of these slides I go into in a lot more detail there. And so if you feel like, oh, it's a shame we haven't got time to look at some some of these things. I know we had a little bit of a late start. So I just want to just acknowledge where you can find out more, either by reading the book Active Hope or going to this free video based online course at activehope.training. And uh, it, it will, there's, there's actually two, it, it's released in weeks over seven weeks. And there's two weeks looking at some of the inspiring, useful perspectives. So that, that, that's where to go on some of that. But what I want to introduce now, I want to introduce one of the practices that I introduce in this course. And it's a way of going around this strengthening spiral of gratitude, honouring our pain for the world and seeing with new eyes and then going forth. And I'm going to suggest that it's something that we do together over the next 20 minutes or so. And then we'll have a chance, we get, we'll take a short break and then we'll have a, an opportunity to discuss some of these things in more depth, some uh, those of you who, who want to. But just over the next 20, maybe 25 minutes, um, I'm going to suggest that we, 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 we go around this spiral. We try it. And the way I'm going to suggest that we do this is that we're on a strengthening journey. And this is something you can do yourself. And um, th there's actually at activehope.info. Um, you can download the first couple of chapters from Active Hope um, as a PDF. And it's got this picture. This is from the book Active Hope on page 42. You can download it for free and it talks through this practice. I invite you, you can do it yourself. I, I do it sometimes when I'm just taking the dogs for a walk. Um, I do it sometimes when I'm writing in my journal as well. But you can also do it in conversation, one to one. It works really well as a partnered practice. And there's a at activehope.info if you look at the video section there there's a um a video of me demonstrating this with someone else um that that, that i i find very helpful dr dante council um 
but we're going to try it now and, and the way I'm going to suggest we try it is I'm going to give a number of beginnings of sentences and I'm going to invite you just to write in the chat window whatever words seem to naturally follow that and we're beginning with gratitude gratitude is about really um, there's depth to gratitude like that iceberg but also you can think of it as reminding yourself what you appreciate but also gratitude is a social emotion. It points your attention beyond yourself at the network of support around you. So when you're struggling, a really great place to steady yourself, to strengthen yourself, to resource yourself is to begin with gratitude. And we're gonna do that right now with this first open sentence and just inviting you to write in the chat window, I love. Do you see what words naturally follow that? And I'm going to ask either Caroline or um, Ruth just to read out what comes up. And I'm going to suggest that we do this just for one minute. Just for one minute. Caroline, um, Ruth, over to you. Just inviting you to read okay. out what's there. Ruth, are you doing the first one? Just over a minute. And I'll call okay, time I'll after a minute. Them. One minute beginning now. Sorry, Carolina, I was muted. Yeah, my my family, my friends and family, my child. Are you reading? Humanity. I love to dance. My dog. Wild spaces, growing plants, animals, light, nature. My child. Conkers. <laughs> I love my veg garden. God, family, nature, music, smells, my allotment, rivers, woods, being outdoors, family, outdoor silence. Birds singing in connection with others. Three, two, and one so that's just a minute that's a minute sharing gratitude this is something you can do in your own time just say oh, i've got a bit of time um i'm just going to start with the words i love and see what naturally follows that uh, i think of gratitude as that there's two um important numbers and one is four and the other is two i call it the 42 of gratitude and the the four is about um uh what who you're grateful to what you're grateful to that's about appreciation but the the two is about who are you grateful to or what are you grateful to and we're going to move on to that now we're moving around the spiral notice how you feel with just that one minute of focusing attention on what you appreciate and what you love and when you're seeing disturbing news you might say okay i'm just going to resource myself with gratitude i'm going to take a couple of minutes I love dot 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 for a minute and then the second one and we're going to invite you to do this now again writing in the chat window I'd like to thank so I'm going to write that I'd like to thank dot 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 over to you you have a minute and just inviting um, you to uh, read out um, uh, Caroline I think now okay yeah um, I'd like to thank Norfolk and Waverley Mind thank you my mum, my parents, godparents, Mother Earth, Alan who died on Sunday, friends, God for the beautiful creation, all my teachers, my family, the National Trust for protecting outside spaces, my husband and son, I'm an activist, my mum for the gift of life, my friend Rosie Sarah, Amy Kerry, everyone who supported me, all the people who show up and care. Conservation volunteers, all those who campaign for peace, my family for being there for me, Earth for its beauty and life-giving energy and support. Joanna Macy. And I'm drawing to a close. Thank you. 
Thank you. Notice how it feels when you remind yourself of who you're grateful to. You know that you're not alone. You know that you're part of a larger network of support. There's people and entities and beings who, ha who have really played a role in passing on benefits that you've gratefully received. And you can also be part of a process of passing those benefits on, paying back and also paying forward. And so now we're moving around the spiral. And what I find is that when I give attention to what I love and who I'm grateful to, what also comes up sometimes is my concern about the direction that things are heading in, how um, some of uh, what I, I love is um, threatened. And we're going to give this our attention now. And I'm just going to invite you to write in the chat window as well. And if Ruth, you can just read out it as it said that we're, we're giving attention to our concerns. We're not brushing them aside. We're not overly staring at them either, but we're just really paying attention, noticing what's there. So if there was a beginning sentence that said, looking at the future we're heading into, my concerns include, what, what would you put? Over to you, just writing, writing in the chat window, looking at the future where into my concerns. Poverty and suffering, use, use of plastic, young people having no future, biodiversity loss, nuclear war, destruction of nature and all the animals, hunger, human rights and animal rights, children now and children of the future, collapse and starvation, loss of animals, flooding, war in Ukraine, lack of common sense around what we're doing for the planet and how corporations are responding, biodiversity loss, extreme weather, the decline of rare animals and creatures, humans having no concern at all for the natural world, the availability of resources, climate injustice, that people will die alone in suffering and pain, melting ice, lack of awareness, loss of trees. Drawing us to a close and we're just holding that. We could have more time. And this might be something you come back to if you feel incomplete after any of these sentence um, starters, know that this is something you can come back to and do in your own time. And I feel sometimes like I'm witnessing a car crash when I bear witness to all that's happening in our world you know a car crash on an absolutely massive scale there are all these different things that have been written there we're just taking that in we're not indifferent we're noticing and there may be feelings that we that we feel feelings that come up in response to that and when we honor our pain for the world we're just noticing to saying yes that's how i feel Maybe write it down. Maybe find some way of marking it. There. So in our book, Active Hope, we talk about ways of um, marking some of our feelings. Maybe having a like a can, like a little pile of um, pebbles that represent some of the things that we grieve for in our world or concerns us. But writing is also a really helpful way sometimes to say, I'm going to fill a page with this. I'm going to fill a page with all my concerns. Not to get stuck there, but to give it my full attention. But also with this spiral, I'm on a journey where I'm paying attention to that. And then I'm also moving into seeing with new eyes. And the, the, the seeing with new eyes is a bit like with the gratitude and the honouring our pain. We're paying attention to what's there in both its beauty and its horror. Paying attention to the awesomeness of life and also to the planetary emergency happening in our time. But then also we're looking at, well, what helps us? What helps us when we face all of that? And if we feel overwhelmed, if we feel powerless, then what's needed is a, a journey of seeking out that which helps. And seeing with new eyes is really about that. It's about looking for different places. And so I'm going to um, invite you to have an open sentence that goes facing these concerns what inspires me is and we so need to hear that from each other so i'm going to invite you to just write that in the 
Chat window two, facing these concerns. What inspires me is, and if one of you can read what comes up. Creativity, the sense of solidarity of community, the number of organisations who are lobbying for change. There are people out there who feel the same. Regenerative culture, permaculture, rewilding. The magic that can happen in transformation. Give love, kindness, consideration. People who take action, engaging with like-minded people, the young people, taking one day at a time, sometimes even one moment at the time. All the millions of grassroots organisations doing great things. Humans are, who are doing it differently. The impact of Greta and David Attenborough have had. People being passionate about what matters. Those who dedicate their lives to making positive changes. <coughs> I'm really appreciating what's there and also some that were just right at the top even before I wrote that in so that um, 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 undying spirit of fellow beings. Mm. Um, thank you. The ways nature keeps giving and recovering. When I observe people committing to connection with others, thank you so much. And we need to hear this from each other. I just think, like, what a great conversation it would be, where we just kind of met in circles and said, let's hear from each other. What inspires me is. And maybe just have a bit of time hearing from each other. But particularly, it follows well when we've heard about our concerns. And there's something here called adversity activated development. That when we've really felt our concerns, it brings a much greater need for openness to look for new perspectives, even maybe some that we thought, oh, well, that, that isn't going to help. You know, perhaps in another time, we might have been more dismissive that there's a real need for openness to new perspectives to really be curious really be interested really be on a quest of saying what's gonna help me here and so when you've got um, the support and the resourcing of some of what inspires you then the the next stage of the journey is to look at where you take that and um in this um looking at um facing the concern after facing the concerns, after looking at inspiration, the final stage of the spiral is going forth. And in going forth, there's three different sentence starters that follow each other. And I'm going to invite you to write in the chat window to all three before you press the return. So you because because they're going to be linked to each other. So what I'm going to do is invite you to first of all, think about and feel about looking at the future we're heading into what I deeply hope for is, maybe even just close your eyes. What is it you deeply hope for? Maybe several things come up, but you're giving attention to your hopes. And when you give your attention to your hopes, your hopes can become activated and seek a way of expressing themselves through you. And so if this hope was to find a way of um, happening through you, playing its part through you, what's a part that you'd like to play in support of that hope? So the second sentence starter is a part I'd like to play in support of this is. And then thinking about, OK, something I'd like to do is, but if I was to actually really take a practical, achievable step in the next seven days, and, and to do this every week, every week I say, OK, a step I'll take towards us in the next week is this is really about the practice of active hope, where you're playing an active part in supporting your hopes. So I'm going to invite you to write in. Um, so if, if, if some of you have written some of your hopes and you might think, OK, if I write my five, six and seven responses together so that they follow each other. So looking at the future we're heading into, what I deeply hope for is a part I'd like to play in support of this is, and a step I'll take towards this 
in the next week is. Really inviting you to write in the chat window there. Allowing ourselves a little time. And then Ruth or Caroline yeah. inviting you to read what's there. Yeah, um, I deeply hope for a sustainable future, sustainability, peace on earth. Every product produced for consumers has a sustainability impact assessment to buy more sustainable products and to search for more sustainable products. I deeply hope that people or organisations, people and organisations will make more ethical decisions. Joining in with community, I hope for time and strength. I'd like to play a part in support of this to look after myself and make myself stronger. Next week, I'll start to spend more time outdoors. Fingers crossed it won't be too cold. Deeply hope that a critical mass of people expand their imaginations to be pluricentric, compassionate and anticipatory. I'd like to play a part by doing even more in my work for Climate Museum UK and Culture Declares, getting funding and support so we can activate people really effectively. The step I'd like to take towards this work is to work with courage and motivation on these projects, despite being dashed by others' criticism and niggles. A world based on love, to be the love and embody compassionate presence, sustainability, to cycle more. That greedy people, institutions will stop and think what they're doing to be different, more conscientious and consider it unselfish to work on my use of materials and producing waste. Thank you. It's a joy seeing these and um, that the, these are notes to ourselves. So it's really important to pay attention to what you've written or what you have thought or what you've said. And if you think, oh, I didn't get time to do this properly, know that you can come back to this. It's in Active Hope. It's in the free um, PDF introduction that you can download at activehope.info. And actually, I'll see if I can do something clever by putting the picture in the chat window. How about that? It might just take me a little bit. Well, I'm going to do that in the break. We're going to have a break in a li little while. And... Um, uh, and when we come back after the break, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of time to meet in breakout rooms for those who want to, to have a bit of time just talking through, you know, what's come up, what's come up in this session, this uh, taster introduction to some of the ideas and practices around Active Hope. What kind of questions do you have? But also, importantly, what are you going to take away? What are you going to take away from this session? And then we'll have a chance to pick up and, um, and draw on some of the points together. But before we do that, there's something here about um, uh, nourishing ourself as a valuable resource. And um, so just really um, noticing that if we've been sitting for an hour or so, it's probably a good time just to get up and a stretch. And we might ask a question like, how am I doing and what do I need? I'm going to suggest that we just take a break, quite a short break. We we were talking, um, uh, Caroline and um, Ruth and I before, we wondered whether you'd be able to have a, a, a keep a break to about six and a half minutes long. How about that? A six and a half minute break, just long enough maybe to have a pee um, and not to worry if it stretches just maybe a minute or so over than that, but not as long as really a 10 minute break. It's not long enough to make a cup of tea, but it might be long enough just to stretch your legs, to pay care of your body and then we'll be coming back and having a chance to um, take some of this uh, um, stuff further. Um, Caroline or Ruth, is there anything that needs to be said or you'd like to say um, before we just move into taking a break? Um, I'm just going to, the only thing was if, if anyone isn't going to come back, just please could you fill your um, evaluation form in, um, which I'm going to put in the chat. Um, that's the only thing I think. I just Thank quickly you. add as well, just um, for those that don't want to um, be part of this, but would like to stay part of the call. That's really welcome. So do feel free to come, come back and just have your your, your screen off. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about what the local um, some of the local things that are happening in in Norfolk that we're offering as well too. So a little bit more information about some of the fantastic events we've got coming up. Yeah. Thank you. And what I've done is I've just put in the chat window a picture 
a JPEG of the seven sentence starters. So feel free just to download that. You can have it on your computer or your um, device and, and just come back to that. And this is a practice you can come back to again and again. And so the project of Active Hope is like, how do we take on the project of engaging in Active Hope? But how do we also in, um, take on the project of supporting ourselves and each other in taking part in Active Hope? And that's what this seven sentence starters is designed for. And, and I, I invite you to try it out with other people. Say, hey, do you fancy doing this where we do just one minute each way? There's a video demonstration at activehope.info. Um, try it out. Love to hear how you get on.